The concept of energy is a cornerstone of physics. But do you really understand what it is? What is energy? Textbooks define energy as a capacity to do work and work as a transfer of energy. I kind of like this definition, it is very usable. I personally consider it quite accurate, but for my students, it's kind of the chicken and the egg situation. Yet, there is a hidden meaning behind this. In this video, with some examples, we will explore what this hidden meaning is, and from there, understand the essence of what is energy. Energy is a capacity to do work, and work is a transfer of energy. First, let's try to understand what the textbook means when it gives these kind of definitions. Imagine a guy. And this guy is pushing a big box. Because he's pushing a box, he's applying a force. If there is a force on the box, due to the guy, it means the box is accelerating. That's the second law of Newton. If the box is accelerating, that means the velocity of the box is changing. So if I choose a positive direction that way, here my acceleration would be positive, therefore my velocity goes up. If my velocity goes up, my motion increases, and also the energy related to it, which is the kinetic energy. So it means the kinetic energy of the box, which is one half mv squared, goes up. If the kinetic energy of the box goes up, it means the energy of the box goes up. But the guy, now he pushed and he's feeling tired. He gave energy away to the box because he worked on the box. The guy worked on the box, transferred some of his energy to the box, and now the box has energy, kinetic energy. It's moving. Now let's consider the box after the guy pushed. So now the box got a constant velocity, right? It has energy because it's moving. And on the path of the box, there's a ball. What do you think will happen? The box is going to approach the ball, and when it hits the ball, it's going to push on the ball. But the ball is going to start moving because it will be accelerated by the box. Meaning its velocity goes up, so its kinetic energy goes up. The kinetic energy of the ball will go up. Why? Because the box, which is now here, <laughs> will have pushed on it, will have worked on it. Therefore, the box is going to slow down. It's going to lose energy. The energy of the box goes down. So the box worked on the ball. And it could do that because it had energy in the first place. The box had energy of motion. Therefore, it could do work. If it had been at rest, it wouldn't be able to push on the ball or to do some action on the ball. So, this is a definition of the textbooks that implies all this. And it does make sense. And it's very usable and practical to solve problems. But it still doesn't say what energy is. Now, thanks to this example, you understand the relationship between work and energy. But it doesn't answer the question, what is energy? The way I perceive energy is like nature's urge to reach an equilibrium between bodies of a system so that the net capacity of work within the system tends towards zero. Let me illustrate. To get an idea of what this concept means, let's consider two objects. One object is at 50 degrees. The other is at 20 degrees. What is temperature? Temperature is a measurement of the average kinetic energy 
of the constituents of a body. So, for this body at 50 degrees, all the particles of this body have got a certain amount of kinetic energy. I will present the kinetic energy like these arrows. It could be a vibration in a solid, for example. Same thing for here, right? This one has also a temperature. Therefore, the particles have kinetic energy. But you see, I'm going to draw the arrows a little smaller. They have less kinetic energy here. I could imagine a bar chart, right? So, which I represent the level of energy of the two bodies. This one is lower than this one. Also, I would consider these two bodies totally isolated, meaning they cannot interact with the environment. That is, the universe I'm considering is just made of these two bodies. And I'm putting these two bodies in contact, and then I will explore what happens. Well, the particles at interface, the particles which have more kinetic energy from the first body, will hit the particles with less kinetic energy. Therefore, they will increase the kinetic energy of these, and these will lose kinetic energy. It's a bit like the box and the ball that I presented before. Therefore, the kinetic energy of the particles here are going to decrease, and the kinetic energies of the particles here are going to increase. So there will be a transfer of energy from here to there. Such a transfer is called heat. Usually written Q. This body is heating this one. What happens in terms of representing the energy of the two bodies? Well, in that case, this body is transferring energy there, so it's losing some. And this one is gaining some. Right, so in the end, now fast forward in time, I imagine the two blocks are of the same material and of the same mass. The two blocks are now at 35 degrees. Therefore, the energy within them, the kinetic energy of its, their particles, have got the same value. What do we have now? We have a universe which is made of two objects, and the two objects have got the same temperature. That means that the constituents of the two objects have got the same amount of kinetic energy, on average. Meaning that each of the objects has got the same amount of energy. Can an object do work on the other? Well, no. It's like if you were trying to heat something with something at the same temperature. It just won't happen. So now we're in a system where no work can be done. Can we say of such a system that it has energy? Well, no. For me, the system is dead. Nothing can happen. For something to happen, you will need to bring something else inside the system. But we just said the system is isolated. It makes its own universe. We say that such a system is in a state of maximum entropy. But that deserves another video. Bad news. In the future, in the very, very distant future, in trillions of trillions of trillions of years, our universe will suffer the same fate, where everything will be at the same level of energy. No work will be able to be done. The universe will be considered as dead. Nature did its thing. It made it reach an equilibrium and stay there. For me, when you reach such an equilibrium, there's no more energy. From this example, you realize that energy is a relative quantity. Something has energy relatively to something else only. Energy is a possibility of an action due to a difference between the state of objects. If all the bodies of a universe are in the same state, then nothing can happen. There is no capacity to do work. So in this universe, there is no energy. What we perceive as energy is an abstract quantity that can be associated with an object. It is a relative quantity. It represents a capacity that this object has to perform an action on another, do work basically, 
in order for the system of the two objects to reach a state of equilibrium. High school textbooks define the energy of a body as a capacity to do work. What's implicit here is that this body is not in equilibrium with its environment and thus can, could or will carry out some action in order to reach this equilibrium. Understanding energy intuitively comes with practice. Think about everyday situations where energy is involved and try to see how your understanding of this video applies to these situations. If you enjoyed this video, or if it helped you getting a better understanding of what is energy, please like and subscribe. Doing so really supports the channel. Now it's time to go, so I'll see you soon for another episode of Physics Made Easy. Bye.